All right. In the previous video, I dem demoed uh, a Mach 4 UI script that I've created, which ports uh, some CNC router parts code that was written for Mach 3 into Mach 4. Uh, and this allows us to use the CNC router parts uh, auto zeroing and corner finding touch plate uh, in Mach 4. And so in this video, I'd like to demo how uh, to get the code and install it into your instance of Mach 4. And so I've created a, a repository in GitHub, and I'll have a link to it below. Um, and we'll use that here to uh, install it. And so here in my uh, profiles, I use Billbug CNC as my base. And so that, that already has some configurations. So I think here I'll, I'll use my base configuration, which is this PMDX424 sample, and I'll create a copy of that. And I think I'll call it CTP demo. And uh, we'll uh, load that up. And here it's complaining that my controller is not actually connected right now, which we don't care about. And so we'll load the screen elements. And here we are in the base uh, screen. And so in the previous uh, demo, you saw that there was a new tab here next to the jogging tab. And so we'll just jump in and we'll go to the operator edit screen and we'll go into the screen editor. And then we'll expand this, and then we'll see in the Operations tab, which is a, this box right here, uh, that the, this is where these tabs live. And so we want to add a new one. And so it's a little bit confusing UI. At this level um, of the Operations tab, uh, most of these buttons are uh, disabled or grayed out. And so it kind of would make sense, oh, there's one here for Add, add a Tab Control. You'd think that would make sense. but no, it's actually over here. It's add a page. And so uh, we definitely want to be selecting operations tabs, and then we'll add a new page here. And so it creates a, a beautiful name of NBP, uh, and we'll just change that. I think I'll follow their naming convention and go tab Z touch, touch plate. And You'll see here this label. This label is what shows up here, so we'll we'll just change that as well. I'll just call it uh, Z Touch Plate, and that will be good. So that gives us the the page, and now we need to add a Lua panel to it. And so that's this icon up here, add a Lua panel, and so it's it's not a drag and drop thing, but if you just click on it wherever you're selected here it will be inserted so if you select the wrong one it may go somewhere you don't want so select the the new page aka tab that you just created created and press uh, add a lua panel and so then we get this lua panel down here and i'm just going to drag it to take advantage of the real estate we have here and so same thing it gave it a great name called lua so i'm gonna just call it uh Z touch plate Lua panel. And that should be good. And so now I'm going to basically, I've created the panel, and now I need to create a script for code to run within that panel. And so I selected up here the, the actual panel, not the, not the tab that it lives in. Uh, and then I'm going to come down here and click in the properties table this events button. And so that brings up this item. And you're like, okay, what's that? But if you click over here, <laughs> it'll give you this ellipsis. And if you click this ellipsis, it'll go into the Zero Brain Studio. And so this is just one of those just things that I found a little confusing. Um, it's not clear to me exactly what uh, Mach 4 is doing with these and so originally when I implemented this um, UI panel I just put all the code here and so this is basically just a temporary file and when you save it and go back it basically inlines the code essentially back into the screen script and I didn't like that for a couple different reasons um, so I'm used to having separate files that you can version control and diff kind of easily and by 
you know, inlining that, it makes it harder to, to sort of track. And then also the, the screen script kind of gets polluted with all sorts of stuff that maybe doesn't belong there. So anyway, after I got it working, I, I switched it to be a module. And so if there, you know, if you guys are Mac 4 uh, coding wizards, maybe you can, you know, tell me why this is a bad idea or, you know, maybe it's a great idea. I don't know. Um, but it's the way I chose to do it, mostly because it, it gives us a, a cleaner module. And so now I'm going to go out to the URL I have for my Git repository. And so I'll, I'll link this list link below. And so um, I've made a I've made a release. Right now I only have one. I've called it release version 1.0.0. And uh, I have some description here and then down here sort of uh, an installation instruction. And it's essentially what we're going through right now. And so it tells you to download the uh, latest asset, which if you scroll down to the bottom here, we have uh, three, uh, basically two zip files and a tarball. And so... This is the Z touch plate and the version number zip is the one you want. It just contains literally the one Lua file that this module implements. And then this source.zip will just get you the whole repo. And it, it's mostly my configurations. And probably nobody else in the world is all that interested in how my machine's configured. Um, but it's just a repository. So anyway, we have this, this, this asset. This zip file is the one you want. And so uh, we'll... We'll uh, just click on it, and it'll say, do you want to download it? We'll go, sure. Um, and so he here the instructions are just saying the same thing. We're, we're going to move that zip file we just downloaded to the cmock copy directory, and then we're going to unzip it. And basically, it's going to unzip the one file, which is in the, it's going to put it in this uh, modules directory. It'll create the directory ztouchplate, and it's called ztouchplate Lua. And uh, these are basically going through the instructions that we're walking through in this video. Uh, we're going to create the panel and create a script for it. And then we're actually going to cut and paste this stuff into that script. So I'm just going to copy this stuff and go back to our zero brain editor. And so here's the script. I'm just going to paste this in. Uh, so it's pretty lean. Um, so basically, we just get an instance of the of the machine, and then this whole block of code here is just loading the module. So it's asking, uh, what, what's the profile are we using, and what's the path? Um, and then here, it's it's basically adding this new Z touch plate uh, directory that will be created uh, to the path, so it will know where to find the module, and so. And then here in this last line, we're just loading the module into this variable called ZTP. And so here uh, we're just calling the one function. And so within the, within the module that I've created, I've created a master function that's just called create. And that's all we're calling. And so that's pretty much uh, what it's doing. And so if we, I, I click save there, and now I'm just going to close out and go back to our screen editor. And as you'll see now, there's basically this a script that's sort of pending uh, integration into the screen. And so now I'm going to uh, go up to operator and e e exit out of the screen editor. And I expect it to blow up because we haven't unzipped that file yet um, and basically put that module into the modules directory. But it's good to show it anyway. Let's do it. E I'm exit. Do you want to save? Yes. Boom. Bang wheels fall off, panic is, ensues. So basically it's saying that uh, this Lua panel wants to load a module that it can't find. So anyway, we're going to live with that for now and, uh, and then go to the file system. And so here's my download directory. I've got that. I want to cut and paste it and we're going to go over to the mock for hobby directory and I'm just going to leave it here and then I'm going to extract here. So basically I'm, I'm unzipping the file in the mock for hobby directory. And so what it should have just done is uh, in the modules directory created a directory called Z touch plate and within that directory it has a Z touch plate Lua file. So that's basically the only code that's uh, comes from the repository. 
So now if we go back, and I'm going to close out uh, Mach 4 now to reload. Um, do you want yes, and then we'll just reload the ZTP demo. And so every time you, you restart, you'll reload. So it's complaining again that the PMDX smart pod's not connected. We don't care. But now it's loading that screen. And so it's going to, if if it still couldn't find that module, it would have given that same error that we saw before, that it couldn't load it. Uh, so now um, we have the tab. It looks pretty good. Uh, we I seem to have failed to change the name of the tab itself. So... We can go in there and deal with that. Expand that. Expand. Go down to the touch and the tab. So I left this Z touch plate. All right. <coughs> I'm just going to exit out. And there we go. So now we can see uh, we tried to run it, but our machine's not enabled, so there's trouble. Um, but everything's here, and it looks to be working, so that's great. So you don't have to put this here. You could have put it anywhere you wanted. If you wanted a tab up here, you know, bottom line is the primary principle is the same. Create a container for it, and, and then add a Lua panel, and then put that code that links the panel to the module into that panel. So I hope that is clear. Um, so I'm going to go into the screen editor again and then go back to the script, uh, open that up. And so in this, in this um, Zero Brain Studio, you can go and see the module now. So if you open the modules directory, you'll see Z touch plate. And then this is the actual code file. And so, uh, you know, it's, I'm not really sure who the audience for this particular video is, whether you guys are all masters of, of Mach 4 or just beginning or, you know, anyway, um, you know, Lua was, it, it is meant to be pretty lean programming language. It's meant for embedded systems, so it's meant to be small, fast, and, and sturdy. And so it doesn't have a lot of fancy um, data structures in it. So the fanciest thing it has are what it calls tables. And there, if, you, if you're used to other programming paradigms, it's, it's basically an associative array. It basically allows you to associate some one objects with another, usually, you know, strings with integers or, you know, one thing with another. And so this is basically the Z touch plate, and it's sort of the, the main wrapper for the module. And the first thing you do here in this file is you, you create the Z touch plate, and then way down at the bottom, you, you actually return it. And so it's, it's basically a wrapper for the module. And so uh, sort of to peek under the hood here, uh, we have uh, some at the top here. These, this is basically the configuration constants for, for how this whole thing is going to work. And so we have two main ones, which are the imperial constants and the metric constants. And so like most of these, let's say, these are all based on the physical dimensions of the touch plate itself. And I don't see those changing too much, but I assume maybe if there was a manufacturing discrepancy or something, and if you break out your caliper and measure it and your distances are different, maybe you would want to come here and update them. But uh, all of these, you know, obviously these imperial ones are all in inches, and then these metric ones are all metric. And so if you do change one, please do the conversion into the other and change that one to match because, if, you know, otherwise you'll get behavior that's kind of weird depending on which which unit of measure you select. And so, uh, like, these these three are, are not directly, you know, it's somewhat related to the physical dimensions, but it, it's basically telling you what's the, the, the maximum distance you want to travel to, to find the edge of a probe. And so... Uh, CNC router parts use these defaults, and so I more or less just copied them from the, the Mach 3 version. Um, and that's pretty much that. Uh, there's another one for orientation, which is essentially just another map where you're associating the index of the radio buttons for the various positions, the orientations, to their uh, text values. And that's used within the code to sort of look up translate 
and then there's x probe direction and y probe direction and so depending on what what you select and which corner of the workpiece you put the touch plate on the uh, probe has to move in different directions either positive or negative directions and so this is where this is sort of mapped out um, I believe these are all working so I don't think they should be changed um, and then there are other constants inches millimeters these are just sort of more lookup things for the UI uh, this UI one is, is a just a container to hold all the UI elements so that they would be in one place and then data data is the same thing but with just with uh, the user user input so all of the all the you know what the user selected and what number they have for tool diameter etc is all stored in there and uh, that's pretty much it um, you know for those interested you can you know walk through the logic I think yeah I won't get too much into it um, I will say that one of the more interesting things here is is this function. This is the load widget component. So, so everything that's in here was actually cut and paste from another tool. And so there's an open source tool out there that's called WX Form Builder. And so it's a it's a what you see what you get uh, kind of editor for WX widget UIs. And so it's what I I used to uh, make the UI look pretty basically. And so you you sort of drag and drop and you, you uh, then have it output code and it can output in Lua or C or several different languages so this is the Lua output and so I more or less just paste it in here uh, I, yeah and you know you can come and tweak you know I think one, one of the things I did was maybe parameterize the name of the run button what text is displayed in the run button or something like that but anyway that's that's where all this GAC comes from and then down here at the bottom, I left this block. Um, and maybe the, any Mach 4 wizards can tell me this was folly or brilliant. I don't know. Um, but anyway, if you're in this UI, uh, in the Zero Brain Studio, and you try to run this, if we click Run up here, you'll say it just it, the program just completes. It just runs through it. It returns this touch plate and doesn't really render anything. And so if you uncomment these two lines, you can uh, save it. Then you can actually run it here in this sort of a standalone mode, so it's outside of uh, Mach 4. And so this is good for testing UI and and the inputs and outputs and stuff. And so it's kind of useful. Um, it, you'll get the pop, same pop-ups. They won't look identical to the way they do in uh, Mach 4, but nevertheless, so that's useful. I would say um, the only thing you have to do <laughs> is you have to remember to comment them back out before you run it. In Mach 4 again and if you don't you'll actually get a, a duplication of the UI so you'll see in the in the glue code here in this in the script you have ZTP create and then within the code again you you're calling it as well and so it becomes this nested loop um, I'm sort of surprised Mach 4 didn't fall on its face when I did that which uh, uh, but it seems to stand up to it, but obviously you don't want it. You'll you'll see a basically a ghosted multiple UIs there in, in your little panel. So obviously not what you want. So so that's about it. Um, I'm gonna close out here. Uh, and yeah, if you if you want to do a code review, I totally uh, open to all you know input, maybe features or whatever. Um, I did the best I could with what I know and what I have. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope it's helpful to somebody. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.